church and the beautiful old graveyard. Can you see right in here? And so tell us who you are. I'm Pete. And what did we just complete, Pete? We've just had a two-day session in Windsor Castle on releasing ambition. And we've all been encouraging and supporting each other more in releasing the ambitions of all those we work with. And it's been fantastic. And it's just the beginning of a long relationship with each other, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. We're there for the journey. We're there for the duration. We're alongside each other all the way. Okay, what's your name? My name is Fanula Waldron. And where are we? We're in St. Patrick's College, Drumcondra, in Dublin, in Ireland. And, and what do you do there? I'm Dean of Education. That's a pretty big responsibility. It is. We have a large faculty here, over 80 academic staff and administrative staff also, and uh, a number of programs, undergraduate, postgraduate programs in education. And how many, how many students do you have, all in all? All in all, in education, we have uh, approximately two and a half thousand. Um, the majority of those, about 1,600 of those, are, um, under, are initial teacher education students, um, and then the rest are postgraduate students in education. The number fluctuates depending on what programs are running and so forth. We have quite a significant number of teachers engaged in continuing professional development with us as well, uh, who are part of those numbers. So, uh, are you? Do you have any affiliation with Trinity or no? Our university is Dublin City University, and we are uh, currently. Our status is we are a college of Dublin City University, and we are entering into a restructuring um, program at the moment. And within a couple of years, we will be a faculty of, of Dublin City University. Um, so that's that's uh, change. The, the higher education in Ireland is changing. As we speak, there's a, an element of um, infrastructural change going on. And uh, you're on tape, so we, we want to answer this very carefully, but um, you're <laughs> happy with this change, right? Well, I think that the, the, the intention is, or what, what, what our, our vision for this is, uh, that we create a, a very, uh, a, a, an institute of education. So we're bringing together the Faculty of Education in St. Patrick's College, which has 80 plus, uh, with the School of Education and, and Dublin City University, which has 20 um, faculty members, and with two smaller colleges, Matter Day College of Education and Church of Ireland College of Education, and that we will all come together on this site to create a new Institute of Education, uh, which will be very significant in terms both of its the level of staffing, the range of programmes, uh, and also the range of research that's conducted here because uh, we're, we're a very research active institution uh, as is DCU and I think when you bring the two together you're going to get some terrific capacity in relation to research. I suppose for us the most exciting aspect of it apart from the fact that we think that together we will be more, more effective than we are apart, um, one of the most exciting aspects of it for us is that we will have teacher education for all levels on the one site. So teacher education for primary level, which is up to 12 years of age, uh, for post-primary, um, and then third level as well, because one of our doctoral programmes, for example, is in teacher education itself. So we will have, um, I think we currently, on our own, we're making a significant impact, but I think together we will make an even, even uh, stronger one. Um, and uh, you know we're also looking at the at the creation of new programs meeting emerging needs in, in society and so on. So most people around the world think that Ireland has some of the best teacher education in the world, mm -hmm. and um, um, and you're sort of the head of it. So how why do you think that you have this reputation? Mm -hmm. I think I think it arises from a number of, of um, I think the, the context of education here um, in some ways is a little bit different in the sense that um, possibly because of our history there was always very high value placed on education and a, a high value placed on teaching as a profession. So teachers were always seen as key uh, individuals in communities and as community leaders um, and teachers uh, 
are are well regarded by the state and have been uh, you know well rewarded in terms of pay and so forth so it's looked on as a very desirable profession to be in it's looked on as a profession that makes a significant contribution to society and it has quite high status in society um, our our undergraduate ITE programs are highly competitive mm -hmm. um, uh, across the country uh, so we tend to get the best students we tend to get students that could do anyway continue <laughs> so. but so I mean we uh, there was a group of people who, who came together 30 years ago and realized that there was something which they wanted collectively to do really for the for the education of their children but they they, they set up they, they established a number of principles on which they th they thought education should be should be uh, should be run. Uh, at the time, they were the complete lunatic left of um, the Irish education system. They only just about managed to exist or to be allowed to exist. They were derided by all and sundry. Teachers were told that they'd never work in the in, in the country again if the school failed, etc., etc., etc. We took our principal teacher off. The principal teacher got the, the the got the offer of the job for this new type of school, which didn't exist at the time. She was working as an advisor to General Guyan's uh, education department in Nigeria at the time, and the guy came from the from the embassy with uh, with the job offer because it had to come through the diplomatic bag. And this courier came to her miles and miles in north uh, in northern Nigeria. And uh, offered a letter, she opened the letter, and, and I asked her, I said, well, did you stop and think? And she says, no, he had to get back to Lagos. I just had to sign it and gave it back. <laughs> so these are the type of risks that, that the original people took. But what, what they managed to do was to create a model which had traction and which was objectively based on what the needs were. And so it's a convergence. So that what, what we find, the strength of it is that the... Um, more and more people get involved, they want to do their own thing, but they're dealing with the same issues, and so it's a converging. It's not like herding cats or trying to establish a brand and make sure that everybody does follows the, follows the manual. It's because it's based on the, on the real issues that they, they, they come with new stuff which reinforces the principles rather than, rather than uh, uh, dissipates or or, 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 or disintegrates. Okay, what's your name? I'm Susan Shaler. And what company do you work for? I work for NAG, that's the Numerical Algorithms Group. And so what do they do? We do algorithms, mathematical maths, put it into a computer, make it work, solve the problems for you. Tell us uh, just a second about your company. Well, we're a, a great little company in Oxford. We're not-for-profit, employ about 100 people. Uh, pretty worldwide, and we just really like helping solving problems. That's very cool. So, um, uh, tell me how we met. We met at a leadership, uh, I think it was a Releasing Ambition conference. I think it was a conference because it was so good, it was hard to imagine that we were actually learning. It was a really great uh, time we had at Windsor Castle, which made it very special. Great bunch of people. Um, so, you know that I'm very, very involved in children's education. I I'm curious to know, uh, you have a company that's very high tech mm -hmm. and always high tech yes. and always on the cutting edge of what's going on around the world yeah. in technology. Do you think um, schools are doing a good job for our youth today? Not really for NAG. I mean, I think I, I think they're raising in the UK some great kids. I mean, I think their um, you know their work ethic is probably better than when I was at school. But what I think where they're failing is just one size fits all, and you know really high performing kids. You know they don't get the special attention the ones that we're going to be interested in later on. I think they they all have to fit into the same box, and uh, you know that for us doesn't do it. And right there is the room that I did a week-long teacher training and have really good memories about it. It's a beautiful, peaceful place. Mm -hmm.